welcome to your talk. So today's subject, we're going to talk about safety and its effect on performance cars. We're not going to get into their effect on every car because yeah. every car pretty much... Um, well, it's called tuner talk. We don't care about it. Yeah, yeah. We care I mean, about fun cars. Yeah, but you know, it's, it, it has affected stuff. You've got what a lot of guys call the safety box, mm. which is you throw all the pieces of the car in this box and then you have to build it within the criteria yeah. of safety yeah. stuff. Yeah. Now we're looking at rear... View cameras and yeah, thirteen hundred airbags and <laughs> roughly thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred, yeah. Give um, it the car turns. You know, I was thinking that um, I'm going to date myself, but you ever seen the movie Demolition Man? Yeah, of course. So the car rolls over yes. and the thing turns into expansion. Yeah, foam. yes, yeah, like yeah. it wouldn't suffocate him to death, but he's you know, the Whoa. car turned into a cannoli. <laughs> yeah, I love cannoli. I love cannoli. If my car turned eat my into a cannoli as an, in, in an accident, I'd be the fattest man alive if that happened. So. You see a lot of, and I always bring up the point, like if you look at any of the new domestic cars, the new domestic mm-hmm. performance cars. So, Challenger. <clears throat> yeah, well, Challengers, Mustangs, to a lesser extreme, but the Camaros and the uh, and, and cars like that. The Corvette doesn't suffer from it as much. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But the side windows got really short. Well, I think, I think, and I could be totally wrong, I, you know, this is not a fact-checking thing, but like, or it can be for you, but not for us. Yeah. I think that, um, like, current crash, you know, U.S. crash regs are saying that, like, the waist of the car has to be at least, like, a certain height from the ground. So, what we're running into is this sort of, and I think you kind of alluded to it at the beginning of the show, we're running into this thing where, like, there are so many regulations on how cars have to be designed that they're all starting to look exactly the same. But it's not because the manufacturers are copying yeah, each other. Well, it's because they all have the same rules so here's, to design here's a car by, you know? I don't know if you agree with this, but... Um, I, Part of the reasons, and this I've heard this from safety guys, is these guys in design, um, is that the, they want the side impact airbags to cover the window opening. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah. And if the window is smaller, the airbag can be smaller. Oh. There's also a lot less chance of you being ejected from the car if the, if the window is smaller. Um, and, and I think that's a lot of it. But I also think that's the reason a lot of the new domestic cars look like the old domestic cars. Because old domestic cars were tanks. If you hit a 70 Barracuda with anything short of a, you know, a, a super tanker, you were going to probably walk away from the accident. And, and that, was a, car, and that was a car with no airbags and a metal dash and a lap belt. You know? They were tanks. Yeah. So they're going back not only for the nostalgia factor of the older cars being more beautiful, in my opinion, but... Um, no, mine too. Yeah, I mean... They, they, Camaro looks like the old Camaro. The Challenge looks like the old Challenge. Well, the new Camaro looks Dodge like crap. Dodge does it. As much as I'm not a big domestic car person either way, Dodge kills it when it comes to the look. They do Almost enough. every car they, they know what I like. They did but their idea was right. Like, I think with Prowler, they went too well, retro. The they are like, hey, let's go back to the but, 20s here, guys. But, but wait, give them, give them some, some slack, because the Prowler idea went from basically like a high boy mm-hmm. roadster to production. The worst part of it was that intrepid V6 that they had in it. It was it like a three point five liter? Oh, it wasn't the two seven, motor. right? Ooh. No, it was a, what but a nightmare. That was a, that was a big thing. But that led to the Viper, because the Viper was built. This Prowler predates the Viper. I, I believe so. Hmm. Uh, and, and it came out. And they just built that thing out of spare parts, and the Viper was bang. It was on the road. Yeah. So and that was yes. People go, oh well, it's just a Dodge version of a Cobra. Yeah. Well, Carol Is that Shelby. that a bad thing? No, but Carol Shelby that was, was an excellent car. there driving the first one, you know, so dumb. Yeah, but, but you know. Yeah, but nobody... Uh, Shelby had worked with... And, and this is something before. that, you know, if anybody's, anybody's, like, sitting there with a with a pen and a piece of paper or at Ford, build a new Cobra that isn't a Mustang. I mean, that's, that's what's really been missing please. to me. Yeah. The GT... But can they the, even now with all the same things? Oh, I think is they could. Possible? I think they could. I they, think they could do a coupe. They could do a coupe. They could do the coupe. Convertibles, sure. I mean, well, yeah, but yeah, maybe. I maybe. mean, you got, you know. Well, I can't, okay, so this gets to this kind of gets to the point that maybe bring up this topic to you before when we were talking about topics is: are the current safety regs and people's demand for technology in their cars killing sports cars? And so here's and so here's why this is relevant, right? So we're talking about Ford making a new Cobra. A modern Cobra. Like a two-seat, open-top Cobra. How much would that weigh and still be road legal today? Well, didn't... didn't wasn't that like a, a movie where they built one? It was... I want to say it was Ice Cube was in it. It was... It was a movie... It was like the second Triple X movie. 
Okay. Didn't he have like an open wheel Cobra prototype something or other? Oh, they, they had it was all, it was horrible CGI. With that, but I know they actually built the car. I think I know what you're talking about. Actually. Yeah, we'll have to, I'll have to look it up. But um, yeah, we'd weigh a ton. And but the thing it would is, weigh no. The first one weighed a ton. <laughs> this would weigh two tons. Yeah. That's the problem. Could have had a lot more horsepower. Well, it would yeah, need no, it no, to no. move the two tons. But I think what it is 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 the fact is the safety perspective is great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. Americans just think they think they can get everything, and they forget that there's trade offs. You know, it's yeah, like, there is. It, it's yeah. like if you, it's like we go back and forth about Android and Apple phones and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Each one does a little bit. Well, it's better at certain they're things. Different, right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you look at you look at a, a new GTR, for example, a Nissan mm-hmm. GTR, um, the U.S. car. Oh, what a heavy car! It's a tank, oh. but it's a fast tank. And, but it has to. But be. It, it pays at the price of having one of the worst steering feels of a sports <laughs> yeah, car I've ever driven. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's, it's yeah. Like, you know, I used the term donkalicious before on that car because it's the twenties and it's very dubby. And doesn't it have twenty ones? They're the twenties. I, I don't know what the new one is. I think I, they're I, big. I, 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 I liked them and stopped caring right after the first one because it. You know, my, well, my friend calls it the the G, the G thirty eight Sport. Oh wow! Because it's just uh, that, yeah. yeah. It's basically that, um, and considering the heritage it comes from, disappointing. But you know, but well, the, certainly if you consider, but like, how do you go from RS four to but, that? Oh yeah, yeah, no, but but yeah, it creates a looming over my shoulder. Yeah, yeah, but crash one. You'll open the door and walk away. Yeah, but okay, fair, fair, but could they have made that car more? Clearly related to the R thirty four and still survivable in the crash. Not absolutely. They it's absolutely a, could. It's not. They absolutely could. The problem could. is when you make for the price point, uh, who knows? rules for every car. Okay. The sports cars suffer the most. I'm going to say something to you that you are intimately familiar with. What does an R thirty four GTR go for right now? You, well, in the U S. In the U S. They're a hundred thousand dollars plus. Cars. What does an R thirty five go for right now? They're over a hundred grand. No yeah, new ones. The new ones are like a hundred grand. Yeah. Okay, so, but the R thirty fours are more. Right? I mean, they're more if you get a Nismo. Holy shit! I think the Nismo is well, like sure. sixty grand. But but the R thirty fours are more probably right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. older car, more money. The R thirty five absolutely could have been more fun. More. But, yeah. No. Absolutely. R thirty four esque. Absolutely. But it would have cost more than R thirty four. But it's a newer car. It should have been. But the thing is, you're. Your wife probably wouldn't take your R34 GTR to the grocery store. I don't want my wife taking the R35 to the grocery well, store. Well, that's the thing. Like you're, 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 yeah. You're, you're, like Who buys an R35 for the wife to take the store? You're trying to get everything. Well, no. I'm trying to get an well, old R34. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is the, the American market is trying yes. to get everything. Yes, that's true. So, that's true. oh, this car, is, is, this car is a sports car, and you push a button, the trunk turns into a tent, and uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, it'll charge 27 cell phones. And it, you know it's capable of turning into a boat and going to, across the Atlantic. You can sleep well, on well, it for sure. at least a week. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. I mean, uh, you know, safety. I understand when when you're buying a car for yourself and you drive it all the time. Yeah. You want something safe. You mm-hmm. want something because the more you drive it, the more of a chance you're being in an accident. It's just math. It's true. And then when you're buying Shots. a car for your wife that's going to cruise around with your kids, that's why we have all these million styles of SUV. Oh. And. And some of these things, I like hate them. the like, you know, they're tanks. Yes, it's like a are. Gurkha going down the road. It's true, actually. I think what's funny, what, what's happening is, whether the average American consumer realizes it or not, is there's actually a, a wedge developing between your commuter slash one car to do it all and pleasurable cars like sports cars. And I think I wouldn't be let me, let me rephrase this. I wouldn't be shocked if. At some point, auto manufacturers were able to say, "Okay, look, we're gonna we're gonna start making sports cars. They'll meet all the safety regs they have. They'll have no technology like Miatas. I think cars analog. like yeah, More cars, analog. cars like Miatas. I think other auto manufacturers will go look how well Miatas are selling, but maybe we're missing a market. What here. I what I was getting to before was like once you set the criteria for safety for the everyday car, it trickles down to this the sports mm. car." And the sports car suffers the worst. No, 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 unquestionably. unquestionably. I think it hurts the SUV the least. Well, yeah, the SUV so doesn't we're, care. We're, watch it's not watch, fun watch ever. Any, any commercial yeah. for a car, five-star safety wrecking. 
yeah. rating. If uh, it's the best in class, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Well, how about you learn how to drive and not crash into shit? Yeah, you or, know, or, you just or don't. Granted, every accident, so people hit you, and okay, fine. But you know, you can't build, keep building these battleships. And the living proof of what I'm saying is, Lamborghini just built an SUV. The uh, your ass. You. <laughs> <laughs> is that the correct pronunciation? No. You're Italian. Is yes. that the correct pronunciation? No, you yeah. But it's, you know, and and I've sat in it and I've played around with it and it's very Lamborghini, but it, it's an SUV. But they built an SUV before. Yeah, but that was kind of a joke. That was kind of a, that was kind of, hey, we built these cars, no one wants it, what are we going to do with it? You know, I would have an I would have one too. Yeah, I would have I've, been, I've been in one, they're pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but sports cars, like, you know, you see a lot of stuff like we talked about before. The NSX, the worthy competitors of the older car. Mm. And, and the thing is, you look at a lot of these sports cars, and they not they don't you can't sell a car anymore unless you get in and it has Bluetooth and it's true. all this stuff. And no, Navi, true. which was navigation is like the worst thing in the world. I'm gonna <laughs> I don't even care that. about that. I'm going to yeah. say that now. I have driven every kind of navigation system there is. Your phone is better than it. Just take the damn Navi yeah. on your phone and save some time. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Just tape I, a map to the dash or something. <laughs> forget, forget selling a car. I won't even rent a car if it doesn't have Bluetooth. Right. If I rent a car and for whatever reason that car doesn't have Bluetooth, I'm like, oh, I'll pay the upgrade. And, and, and the thing is, give me the better car. Modern time, we have more choices. Mm -hmm. We have a lot more choices with cars. We have a lot more choices of what we want. What My we want. car had Bluetooth. I'm not kidding. I'm but so, 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 you move, you know, you've got, okay, well, I've got a car for my wife. I have two kids. I need this SUV. It has to be the, the, the size. Mm -hmm. And the wife's like, well, I need to put this in. And the dog's going to fit. With that. I get it. Yeah. So not getting into those cars. But sports cars, it should be, first of all, I get into this all the time with some of my friends, that it's not a real sports car unless it has two seats. And three pedals. And, and three pedals. Sorry. But, yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, I mean, I've... I bit my tongue and embraced the whole things are going to be auto now, okay? It, the carburetor's gone. <laughs> Technology is changing. Okay, you know, Mark, get, get, yeah, on, get yeah. on the get on the boat. Sure, you know? I won't. But but, fine. but what I'm saying is, yeah, you can always have the vintage cars. You know, they'll be yeah. vintage and the old Yeah, yeah. But, but you can. But it's a sports car's two seats. You don't need any more than that. If you're looking for luggage capacity in your sports car, it's probably a bad idea. You're not buying the right car. Well, and, and a lot of auto manufacturers share your particular point of view on this subject because once a car is a two plus two or a five seater, it's a touring car or a grand touring car. Right. Or, you know what I mean? It's right. a coupe or a sports coupe. It's not a sports car. But a dedicated, a dedicated, Unless have but a dedicated sports car yeah. should be two seats. Oh, uh, yeah. And now, that's why I always use that comparison with the JDM stuff. Supras didn't have back seats in Japan. RX7s mm -hmm. didn't have back seats in Japan. I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. The, the Skyline had back seats because it's the only car built from a sedan. But it was a touring car. But the JGT. Yeah, but it's, 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 sure, but it's, it yeah. was, right. So when you look at the Supra and the RX7 they knew it was. and all that stuff, it didn't have a back seat. That's right. Sports cars didn't need a back seat. The NSX didn't have a place for a back seat unless yeah. you were sitting where the engine was. Uh, yeah. So, but now... Oh wait, we'll give you this car. It's a sports car, but this back seat that yeah. you can't use anyway, unless you have little kids, and you're torturing them back there too. Aston Martins have back seats, but they're touring cars, they're touring cars. Ever or grand touring cars. Yeah. Right. So you look at you know, I mean, I'm not talking about Mustangs and some of them, but the you're now you're thinking about the safety. The reason I was getting to this is now with a lot of these cars not being true sports cars, not being a two seater, you have to now think about safety for four people. That's you have to a good think point. about the back seat. That's a good you point. Have to think about That's what happens point. when you crash into the car in front of you. Your airbag deploys. The guy in the back seat takes a little ride right, 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 right. to the back of your to big. To get head butted in the back. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's all that stuff. So now you're That's a good point. adding more people to the sports car. So more safety. So it's not more weight. Sure. Yeah. So now you're adding airbags. You're adding lap belts. You're adding. You know, what's the first thing you do when you have a four-seat car that you're turning their track cars? You get Take rid of the back seat. <laughs> Take the back seat. You're not getting rid of the passenger seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first car I ever owned actually was a '72 Beetle, and the first thing I did after I got it running, because I got it for my 15th birthday present, is I took out the back seat. Yeah. Like, so I mean, it's like your, your weight reduction. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. what you're saying is, and I think the Italians got it figured out, because like when they make the, the, like. The, the, uh, the, like, 
like, well, Aston makes one too. Super Legera. They just came out with the new DPS yeah. Super Legera. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, super light, for those yeah. who don't know what that means. In, Ita- in, in, in Italian. In Italian. So, um, you know, super light, cannoli dispenser, all that cool stuff. You know, <laughs> Sign me up. The only thing that isn't light is the guy who owns it. Sign me up. Yeah, so Where's that cannoli button? It just fills it up. <laughs> um, but they're making, they're charging you more money to take stuff out of That's your car. car. <laughs> well, the GT, the GT3 was kind of the big, like, the, the one that made people made fun of about that. Yeah. I think it was on a, a well-known yeah. Uh, yeah. motoring show. And uh, one of the presenters is like, wait, so they're, 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 about they're charging the, you more. The Gallardo Super Legera. To give you less. But yes. There was another episode, I think, that they did that, where they were talking about the Super Legera, the Gallardo. Like, yeah. taking all this stuff out. We're like, but, um, so now they're lightening the car that's already pretty light, given all the safety features. It yeah, has that it has to have. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's gone to something where, you know, if you got in an accident back in the day, depending on how you hit, you're probably going to get hurt. You died like a man. You died like a man. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but now you can get an accident twice the speed. <laughs> yeah. And go, like, oh, oh. My, my neck's sore. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. I think I got like I need an aspirin. Uh, going <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But, I mean, um, but there's, I mean, they make lighter sports cars like, FRS and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying they don't exist. I, I guess kind of my point in, when we were discussing this before uh, the show was, um, I, I kind of feel like technology and safety regs, not just one or the other, are just killing sports cars because, as you said, you're right. Whatever works for the family car trickles down to the sports car. Sure. And like, you know, I don't want to like I don't want to uh, split hairs between. A sports car and a touring car and a grand touring car. They're all sporty, so we'll just say sporty cars. Sure. It, it kills all of them because, you know, like, I, one argument that I hit, well, I should point that a lot of muscle car guys will bring up to me all the time is they'll say, oh, cars now make twice the horsepower of cars in my day. Well, they weigh twice as much. Sure. They have to. And they it's easier to, to make power because it's, it's easier to tune it. Well, yeah, yeah, and manufacturers are figuring but, things out and whatever. But the thing but, is, here's, here's the one hard fact that nobody's going to want to hear. Car people... Don't r- run the car business. Well, car people don't buy new cars. Well, okay, granted, but and car people, or the definition of an automotive enthusiast, has very little say. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's no, a yeah. reason that the Toyota didn't build the Supra for a million years is because they didn't make money on the old one, and they weren't going to lose money again. They lost money on the LFA. Well, yeah, yeah and yeah. they did that to, as a that was a technical as exercise. A statement of yeah, yeah, concept. Yeah. But the the point is, marketing people. Marketing people design the cars. Marketing people do all of it. Focus groups. Focus groups. Yeah. It's all it's all marketing. And and they have to decipher what people say, like, I want a car for under thirty thousand dollars and da da. And then when you build it, they don't want it. They have to figure out what people really want. And no, they, you're right. And they look at the math and they look at what sells and they look at what's sold in the past. Yeah. And safety ratings sell cars. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. You're right. Actually before you went too far in that direction, what I was gonna say is uh, a long time ago, I was a part of a Mercedes Benz. Um, it was a it was an invite only group, mm-hmm. and what they do is they run all these different design concepts by the group. So um, it was online and in person, and they would do like interior colors and like materials and exterior designs and everything. And I was one of the few true car enthusiasts in the group because we could all talk to each other. So we all knew right. kind of each other's. We had like bios and stuff, and uh, whatever I said. In the group, whatever I said, Mercedes did the opposite of that. And I was like, okay, what am I even here for? Like, what am I doing? But you're right. The point of me bringing that up is you're right. Is is enthusiasts aren't buying the cars. And the feature that you can you can brag about to the potential customer sells the car. So the more it's got Bluetooth, it's got this, it's got that, it's yeah. got this. And the problem is. Only in the enthusiast end of, do they even talk about the horsepower That's or the true. acceleration. It's like, it's oh, just it does, for that it does small zero to 60 in this. It has this much horsepower. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but by the way, it's five star crash rate and it's Bluetooth and it's got, you know, no, it's, you're right. it's got jacuzzi it's like cup and trunk and all this other stuff. Yeah. But they're, that's not what's selling the car. No, it's not. And, you know, it's like um, I learned something recently that I thought was really funny about Porsches. Um, an incredibly high number of people that walk into a Porsche dealer buy the car cash. Huh. More than almost any other 
sports car right. out there, even Lamborghinis and Ferraris and all that stuff. Really? Like, really. And I, and I, would I would think Lambo would be the worst. I, I, I would too. Yeah. And, and uh, I, that, well, it's, <laughs> technically it's still Volkswagen, but yeah. But So, so but, in the but, end. But yeah. Porsche, because, and, and I asked the guy, I said, you know, why is that, do you think? And he goes, because people who come into a Porsche dealer aren't coming to look at anything else. They're coming to buy a Porsche. And they have the money, hmm. and they know what they want, and the, the client is has worked it all out before he even walked in the door. What, it's so, the personality type. So what is it about that mark, do you think, that is able to focus so many of those types of buyers onto itself so successfully? It's been around forever. It's been... A, it, the thing that you think is a negative about 911, which is they built the same, essentially the same car for a thousand years, is a selling point. It's a good selling point. Consistency. They've perfected something that, that was already good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and they keep they continue finding ways. People gravitate. People gravitate towards different cars. We were talking earlier about sports cars and different stuff like that. And I, you know, what's funny. I have met so many NSX owners that now own McLaren. And you like McLaren. I like McLaren. You're an NSX. And right? they walk up to yeah. me at car, at car shows weird. and like, oh, I miss my NSX. And I, I miss my car. Can I sit in your car? And I'm like, and I was like, what are you driving now? Oh, I got a 570 or I got a 12C. And I'm like, why do you even care? You know, I mean, he goes, yeah, but this is such an awesome car for what it is. What do you think it is about first gen NSX owners um, that draws so many of them to McLaren's? Is it like a design thing? Is it a. I think there's, I, I think there's, I, I, I think there's, understanding. I think there's three things. Okay. And there's three things. Because you're one and, and the other one. Yeah, and NSXs are probably, you know, you crash in one, you know, John the Zamas, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty rough, but um, the early ones only have one airbag, and mine doesn't even have that. Yeah, but neither is mine. Yeah, so I mean, it's, oh my God. Yeah, but it's like, I think the, the, the number one thing is, it, it falls in that same category as the NSX, the LFA, Cars that were just the best people with the best ideas built the best car where they could. That's um, why I love the F40. The F1, McLaren, okay? And that's, I think, part of it. It's That was the out-of-the-world car. Yeah. It still is. And I think it's that perfection, that precision, that crazy attention to detail that was built even back then. The new car can't even come close to that. But the original cars were just like, man, they were beautiful, and they... And the Japanese took Ferrari and they make, made it better. The second thing is, <laughs> is given the grand scheme of exotic cars, it's cheap to maintain. It's cheap McLaren's. to maintain. They, yeah. It's yeah, no, that's, that's true. But that's true. similarities. They're cheap to maintain. They're not known for braking. No. They're, they're actually known for being way better than you think they're going to be. And when you drive it, you start comparing every other car to that. Well, and as I understand it, and I, this could be just hearsay. I don't know if this is factual. But... Um, as I understand it, if McLaren becomes aware of an issue with their car, they'll not notify you and say, yeah. hey, I've this heard, could I've, happen. And I, and I don't know if this is true, but I've heard stories. They won't where, wait for you to tell them I've, it happened I've heard, to you. I've heard stories with guys who have 12 Cs that have uh, have brought back to the dealership and got software updates from the 650 that have made their car 20, 30 horsepower faster for no charge. It says, like, we learned this about the new car, here you go. so here you go. Or we change out That's your awesome. throttle body because awesome. and you're the original owner. So your car is not only getting faster as you own it, yeah. but a dealer is helping you. Yeah, um, and it doesn't cost you anything. And, and there's yeah. some. And, and, and the third thing is probably um, the Japanese and the British are kind of weirdly similar when it comes to their pride in their cars. Oh sure, um, sure, sure. I mean, I think I think Honda in a lot of cases, the NSX for for example, and, and a lot of their other Japanese cars, they're all beautiful. Supers are beautiful. Mm -hmm. Except, I think the, the Brits, the Jaguars, maybe not the most reliable car in the world, but beautiful car. Well, you know, but McLaren came out of nowhere, essentially like Tesla. Yeah. And said, we're going to, we're the best in Formula One. We're going to build an actual street car. We're not going to tweak Mustangs or twink Mercedes. Right. And play with them and make and put our badge on it and say. Although they did do that, McLaren yeah. tune. Uh, yeah, I'm saying yeah. we're gonna go the next. We're step. gonna make a car. And and then you look at the stuff like. And they chose the a BMW McLaren, engine. And they chose a BMW. But you look at the you look at the stuff with McLaren and and I think the way it's built, the technology center, and people that have watched the videos of how these cars are built and they're 
their dyno really and what cool. pressure water tested in the back, and you can eat off the floor. And you got people like Jay Leno, who essentially can have any car, but the first 12C that was here, and then bought a P1. And if he's buying them one after the other, every new model he wants one. Yeah, and it's like you know, it's it's a statement. Yeah, it is. They're excellent cars. But they, they, I think the OCD factor of how they were built. Yeah, and that that weird. Looney Tunes extra step that you take to, you know, I watched that thing with the technology center and how they were measuring the tile and that uh, uh, something had fallen on the floor and broke a tile and they replaced it and the, and the the president of McLaren was like, I don't even like looking at that tile because it's just slightly off color. I mean, and that, and if, if he's, um, if he's wondering about stuff like that and the fact that McLaren's, uh, you got to watch the video on the McLaren Technology Center. It's awesome. But their, uh, their cafeteria is maintained at negative air pressure. So the smell of food doesn't go out into the shop. Oh, wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay, so. That's wonderful. Come on. But if you have that really much hard. commitment to your sure. wares, yeah, I mean, you're going to. Who's not going to love that? I mean, who wants a car that's some sloppy. Dudes just slapped together. But going, and back to the, going back to the original idea, that car is really safe. They are. Well, I think. Well, I think it's because it's a different of that level of price. I, yeah, well, and I think it's because of that level of commitment you're talking about. They're, they're like, okay, well, we have to have this stuff. Let's figure out how to integrate all that into an awesome car. carbon fiber tub. And yeah, right. And 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 the difference between them and like say to bring up your example, the Chevy Malibu is they're just like. Eh. What's the least we can do to make all sure. this work? You know what I mean? Like, it's a completely different mindset. But what I wanted to get into before you moved on is another British car company, although they're German-owned at the moment, um, Bentleys. Sure. They have a nearly identical level of commitment to the luxury that they put into the cars. What I mean is... Well, yeah, but look at the price point. They're the best luxury car value that you can possibly buy. What I mean is... Because the rolls are more expensive. No, no, no. What I mean is, like... So, everything that's wood in the car... And this is something a lot of people don't know. I've, I've watched videos on how these things are made because I love them. Yeah. If you have wood in the car, any wood that's in the car, a person or a couple of people, they take a panel and they shape every single thing and they make, like, little dowels and stuff so the wood plugs directly into where it has to plug onto. It's not a wood veneer on a piece of aluminum that plugs into the dash. Right, actually, it is a hand-shaped right. piece of wood... But that is sanded and made to fit. For a lot of those car companies, like laser cutting leather for Ferrari and everything's hand built. It's ridiculous. Well, yeah, but I, I watched the thing on how they built a Ferrari dash, and it takes like three days to make a dash. No, yeah, but so, where, where, yeah. where I'm going with that though is I was trying to keep it British. You yeah. know, is that they have a nearly identical level of commitment to the craft, but on the luxury side, and that's why I love Bentleys. But it's you know the sports car Global. version of it, the Bentley Sport doesn't make sports cars, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure loosely, I'm sure you're basically going to have the same crash safety. But oh yeah, yeah. probably yeah. But yeah. like, I'm not, in, in, I didn't bring in Volvos and they're tanks. You know, there's a lot of cars that are tanks, but you could you could get into a car now like I'm sure even the new Supra is going to crash well. Yeah, but it has to crash well. Like I said, it has to have all this gadgetry and safety and. Well, and know. so how much does the new? I don't no idea, and I'm not trying to call you out here. But do you have any idea what the new super does away? I, I bet it's quite heavy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and it has to be, and that's whether, kind of the point on, of the topic. Depending on which engine choice you make. Yeah, well, and that's the point of the topic is is that, it, you know, I think that, pe consumers te technological demands, and the government saying your car has to be at least this safe, is requiring cars to be heavier, which means they well, have to make more power it's, 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 just it's, to be it's, fun at all. Practically, they have to do it that way. There's no way you're going to get the safety in there without Why can't point. there be an out, though? Like, why can't they just say, okay, well, look, if you're going to buy this car, you're going to pay more insurance because you're more likely well, to you, die, but it'll but be you, more fun. But you could go out and buy... I would pay more insurance. You could go out and buy, you know, like a, like a Factory 5... Yes, you can. Or, uh, what's or an the, Ultima GTR. Or an Ultima GTR, or, or, or what's those... Um, Rally Fighter. Oh, oh, like, oh, I know. I know. Rally Fighter. It's got like an LS in it. Oh, what's the name of that? It was in the mean. Transformers movie. Yeah, I know. But I've seen them in person. They're freaking awesome looking. But if you want to do it, you can. It's just mainstream Is cars. It local Motors? Loco. Local. Local? 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 I, can't, I know you mean that. I don't know. Somebody's going to tell us. I think it's local. But 
uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where you can get it, but the fact is that everybody, the marketing world has said, you need to have these gadgets. Now you have them yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the one thing I don't think we've touched on, and I want to hit this before we end it, is you're creating better cars, better in the stretch of the fact that it's easier, um, it's safer. They're, yeah, it's the more survival. And the paddle certainly. shift stuff, which we've talked about before. Yeah. But I think it's easier to sell a car that's heavier, a car that's safer, to the people that are buying the cars now, because I don't think they have, and, and I'm going to get killed on this, but I don't think they have the driving skill that the, no, they don't. the generations prior No, they don't. Because you had to work with less. That's right. Now the car shifts for you, and it steers for you, and it pretty much does everything for you. Well, then to add to that, you have the, the distraction that new technology yeah. brings. And so you have people who are less skilled paying less attention. The car has to be safer. Yeah. It has, and so and, yeah, and, and, and track mode, when I was growing up, was putting a whole different set of tires in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you were changing out your air cleaner, and you were doing all this stuff on the car. But what's, interesting, the what's interesting about this... And, and, and I am only bringing this up because of what you said about like the newer drivers, like a, you know each new generation of driver that comes out is that um, the more analog cars are are in higher demand, both of people from my age group, your age group, and younger. Sure. So even even when people, you get older, you get your life more stable, and then you want the things you didn't have when you were younger. Well, what I'm saying is, people who are younger, who never knew cars that weren't safe. Are going for analog cars as well, so there's something to it. Because you want you want to push yourself as a driver. Some, yeah, some drivers. Yeah, yeah. Some drivers. Yeah. I mean, the average. But then you get these guys that are just the the GTRs, and I hate to beat up on these guys because I, I don't hate the car. It's I there's a lot of guys that just get in because they're easy. Yeah, it's easy. It's yeah. easy to go fast. Yeah, it's it, you know yes, you still have to have some skill. You, you can't be you know smoking a cigar. You can't. You have to pay a attention. Whopper, yeah. But, you know, I mean, but it's so much easier. Oh, so You have to have your, and the thing is, you know, if you do get a car, like an analog car, and you do get a car that's that's fast, and even if some of these cars that are pretty easy to drive, go to a professional driving school, get learn better. how to drive on a track where you're not going to hit anyone, and it'll, it, you'd be surprised how many times it'll get you out of an accident. Oh, for sure. Because you, know, you, you drive the car, you don't, you're not just one of those road ballistics that you're just whipping down the road. Waiting for, the, waiting for the billiard ball yeah, yeah. same with the 20 cars. Um, and I know I've gotten out of tons of accidents that I could have been in because yeah. of um, paying attention to that. But, uh, I mean, one of the other topics that we'll get into in another time is, even though we've added a lot of safety, a lot of the new sports cars have technology to make the car go faster and make the car stop faster and make the car well, handle the P, faster. Well, the P1's a perfect example of that. Right, so, so like McLaren took the whole hybrid idea and they said, okay, how can we combine gas and electric and make the car faster? Right. Not better on fuel, which it is, we'll but save, faster. We'll, we'll save the faster part for another day. Well, yeah. But, so, yeah. before we end, do we agree or do we disagree? Is safety and technology killing sporty cars? Like, I feel like we have to, I feel like we have yeah, to. I don't think it's improving them. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's improving them. I think it's making it a... It's normalizing them. It's, it's making them for everyone, which is, which is why you know, like we talked about in another episode about the transmissions. Yeah. Everyone can drive an automatic. Yeah. Okay, so you can sell it to everyone. You don't even have to have lights. Right. If if yeah. if, if, if your significant other needs to go to the grocery store, they can get in a GTR and drive to the grocery store and open that big trunk and load all the groceries in there and come home. It's it's more functional. Um, it's more accessible. But. Is, I, I don't think I, don't I, think, more I think the trade-off is what you're saying. The trade-off for the safety you get keeps you alive longer. In the situation where it's not you causing the accident. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think anything that's going to safety is a good thing. I think. Yeah, safety is a good thing. I think. I think if it start, and I think the, the performance is keeping up to make it the same way. I mean. Well, I think yeah. no one would want to crash a Veyron in 260 miles. No, 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 no. But I think I think the, I think the issue that I, I personally have, and I think people with a similar mindset have, uh, when it comes to safety, is that so like each year there's an amendment to the previous years or whatever it is. Right. But that's, um, that's safety orders. But that's thing. Players. Well, but here's the thing: people are already let's say if you go to 1999 crash wrecks, people are already surviving accidents. Orders of magnitude better than they were in the seventies. Isn't that enough? 
Can't we just leave it right there? Well, I guess the question is, Why does it have to continue the question to be safe? The question is, shouldn't you always be striving to make your car safer? I'm sure you should. Why? Because less people will die and people want their family members coming home. But fewer cars are fun. Yeah. But, I mean, you always have the option to take that car, bring it in your garage, strip it down from everything, and make a track car out of it. You do, but then it's only a track car. We're talking and about the same thing. Of... We're talking about having everything. Yes, you, want, you, want, you want a light track car that you can drive to the grocery store, and they're, Porsche. they're building <laughs> heavy track-capable cars that could go to the grocery store. That you have to take stuff out sure. of. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We've got to realize, I guess, most of these conversations, whether we agree or disagree, yeah. we're, the, we're the small... That's true. And, and we're not buying those cars. No. Because we're, they're too heavy. We, we're not because we're broke. Because this is all these decisions are made by the four doors. No, no, you're right. You're right. Crowd. I suppose I should be happy that you can pop off yeah, to take I, those I, I guess my out. point is, I don't think we should sacrifice um, safety to go faster. I think we can. I think we can. We can choose to do that on a personal level on a track car. Yeah. But I think as a manufacturer, they're never going to build cars that can't be as safe as they can be because a, it's a selling point. And B, they don't want to be like, oh, well, you could have had that safety feature, but Susie's mom died. What if they were all options? Safety options? So you put the onus on the buyer to decide how safe the car is. Yeah, but now you're talking about the Now, now you're really dating yourself because no one orders options. Anymore. Well, people buy the car at the dealer the way it is. Just, and the only yeah. thing, they're lucky if they choose the color. Yeah, yeah. People get, people, and that's what we were talking about before. Marketing tells people this is what you want. And people go, uh-huh. Yeah. Here, yeah. You don't really want the blue one. Take the red one. Yeah. Okay. You like sports and, and cars? the lemon off the cliff. But that's what it is. Yeah. It's mainstream. But anyway, so build the car the way you want it, and we'll talk to you guys next week.